If you are currently leveling up your Django skills with this tutorial, this tutorial is part of a free YouTube playlist. The link to the whole playlist is in the video description. Now, if you love this tutorial and playlist, then you might also like to check out the whole course, Django Database ORM Mastery on Udemy. The link to the course, which should provide the best price, can be found in the video description. In the previous tutorial, we introduced Postgres schemas and the benefits. So now we're going to take a look at how to actually create and manage schemas in the Postgres environment. Right, so let's jump back into our source code. Now, if you don't have this source code because you've not been following along, you can download this. There is a setup guide at the start of this module. Now, something that might happen if you're working on multiple projects, sometimes when you start a new project or when you open up an existing project, sometimes the terminal, there are problems in regards to the virtual environment and kind of mapping across or moving across from one virtual environment to the next. There can just sometimes be complications with that. So sometimes it can be effective that if you do move into a new project and you can see here in the terminal it says vmv indicating that you are in a new uh, virtual environment sometimes it can be beneficial just to deactivate and start fresh so you can just use whether you're on windows or mac i think you can run the deactivate command and that would just remove or take you out of the virtual environment and then you can go back into it so here on the mac of course i'm going to type in source VMV bin activate. If you're on Windows, it's going to be slightly different. Of course, you're going to type in uh, vent scripts and then activate using backslashes. So that just takes me and just make sure that I'm utilizing the correct virtual environment for the project that I'm working on. And from that point, I can then go ahead and just pip install any of the requirements. Sometimes you might find that here where I've highlighted on the screen where it says ZSH. Sometimes that can indicate that there's a problem. You just need to use the bin to delete and then start a new terminal to rectify any problems you might have there. Let's start off by inspecting the actual Postgres database using the tools that we've set up. So here we are utilizing Adminer at the moment. So we're not quite moved into PG Admin yet. We're still using Adminer. It is a very simple uh, user interface for Postgres. I think it just, for beginners, it just makes it easier for us to work in and around Postgres before maybe moving to uh, PG Admin, which can be a little bit more complicated, a little bit steeper learning curve. Right, so let's start off then by uh, running Docker. So if you haven't got Docker, you'll need to install Docker desktop and then start that up. Now, now let's just make sure that we have Docker fresh. So I'm just going to remove any containers that, I might, that might be running. Let's go back. So let's go ahead and run Docker. Docker compose uh, up and then use the D flag so it runs all nicely in the background so we don't uh, jam up our terminal with information from the container. So you can see that everything has started. It looks like everything has started. So everything at this point should be green. So now we're going to just navigate into Adminer. See it's using port 8080 on localhost. So in your browser, you're going to navigate to 127001 colon 8080. That's going to then allow you to log into your database. So let's select Postgres, our server. That's the name. If you take a look at the Docker compose file, that's the name of this service. So inventory DB. So Docker behind the scenes has a DNS server, which is going to then resolve this name into an IP address and allow you then to connect to the container that you're looking for. In this case, that's our Postgres database. So the username and password is the same, Postgres, Postgres. We don't need to select a database, but you can do. We're using the inventory database, but I won't do for now. Let's log in. Something to be mindful of if you are following step by step, just to make sure that when you run the commands or following along, that you are in the same place that I am currently working in. Sometimes um, 
that can cause certain problems if you try to run commands in the in the wrong place so at the moment you can see i've highlighted here postgres sql and we're currently inside of the inventory database and you can see in this database we have the inventory table which was created through the process of actually building our docker container that was all automated and we have some of the default tables to template one template zero and the postgres database also created now so far we don't have any tables in the inventory table here so if we move into inventory we can see that there are no tables because we haven't migrated yet but on the left hand side this information you can now see in actual fact there are four schemas by default in our postgres environment now as i have already told you the default schema is public so you can see that is selected and that is showing me no tables at all if i were to look at other tables so the information schema you will find in actual fact there are tables already generated in our database related to or connected to this schema and we will be utilizing the information schema later on when we start to run tests so we'll talk about that at a much later date but ultimately what's stored in here is information related to the tables that we're going to be building so just by looking at these schemas here we can already see schemas in action and how they logically separate tables that are inside of our database now remember that all of these schemas here all of these tables are in the same database that we're utilizing for our inventory table but they are just logically separated utilizing schemas now if you are into eating toast and are looking for different tips and ideas on what toast you can build then there is a schema called pg toast which uh, in actual fact is a schema used to store large data objects called toasted data or toast which stands for the oversized attribute storage technique so for example if we had a table with a large text column uh, we could uh, insert a very large text value into it so postgres might store this value in the pg toast schema now we don't necessarily need to think about that anymore in addition to the pg toast we also have pg catalog so the purpose of this schema this schema will contain the system catalog tables and views which hold metadata about the database objects and then finally as i've probably already introduced the information schema so this information schema is a, a standardized schema that is part of the sql standard and is implemented by many relational database management systems in actual fact including postgres sql so if you are using a mysql database you might also find the schema uh, being utilized there so it provides a way to access metadata about database objects in a standardized manner and like i said we're going to be utilizing that to collect information about our tables in order to run our structure tests later on in this module so that's the introduction to the default schemas let's go ahead now and create a new schema as i mentioned previously we need to be careful to make sure that we create the schema or perform the action in the correct section in this case we just need to make sure that we select the database before we run the schema so here in actual fact i think i mentioned or i said previously that these are tables these are databases it even mentions it here these are the four databases that are currently installed in our postgres system the default databases as well as the inventory database that was automatically created when we run our docker compose file now all that we need to do here is to select our database in this case inventory head over to the sql command and then we can start to build our schema in actual fact this is a good time to introduce postgres views view so a view is a virtual table that is defined by an sql query it is a way to present data from one or more tables in a specific format or structure without storing the actual data separately so views are really useful for simplifying complex queries providing security by restricting access to certain data and presenting a consistent read-only interface to underlining tables so what we're going to do here is try and view all of the schemas that are currently active 
available in this database. Now, if we go over to the information schema here and we move down to the views, we can take a look at the views. Go ahead and select data. That should take you into the view table. And now we can see all the views that are available for us to actually trigger from a from an SQL command, for instance. So what we're looking at here, then we have a table with table catalog indicating the, the table name that this view is associated to, or the database, sorry, that this is related to. We have a table schema. Okay, so that's the schema that this uh, view is related to, and we have the table name. So we're going to utilize the schema and the table name potentially to actually start or run the view. And you can see here we have the view definition, which is essentially a stored query that we're going to execute when we select a view. That probably isn't the best explanation of a view, but hopefully you get the general drift of what's going on here. We're able to select a view. It will then run the view definition, the query, in order to then return whatever result we're expecting. Now, if we go into page two here and move down, we can find the view that we want to run. So we are looking to view all of the schemas. So we should have a maybe on page three, we should have a view, which is going to then allow us to view all the schemas that are currently available on the database. So that's what we're going to run. So let's give this a go. So information schema, uh, schemata, right. Let's go back into our public and schema. Let's uh, open up SQL command. Let's go ahead and run this query. So let's uh, select, um, select all, or let's just select in this case, actually, it's going to return everything. Let's select schema name. So we're going to return the schema name and then from, but this time it's going to be, we're going to be calling the view, the information schema view. So information uh, underscore schema dot, and then we saw it's the schemata. Let's go ahead and run this. And that returns then all the schemas related to or connected to this database. Now we can see what schemas are available, even though we knew that already. Let's go ahead and create a new schema. So for that, we simply just need the keyword create. And then what we want to create, in this case, we want to create a schema and then the schema name. So let's go for inventory schema. So if we run and execute that, that should uh, run successfully. Looks like we have run successfully. If we look now in the drop down list, we now have the inventory schema. If you need to remove the schema, then you're simply just going to remove create to drop, and that will then go ahead and drop the schema. So you will need to be careful here if you drop a schema, if you delete a schema, because you want to remove the schema potentially and all the objects within it, or you may need to manage them separately. So what you can do if you want to ensure that all data related to that schema is deleted, you can utilize the cascade keyword, and that should then go ahead and remove the schema and all the objects within it. And in actual fact, if we did have something in our schema, present in our schema, and we utilize the drop schema without cascade, then it's likely that Postgres will return an error. So the basics of managing building schemas is really simple. One last task, and that is to move an existing table to a different schema. Let's go ahead and migrate our tables first. Now remember, Docker has started, so I should be able to just move into my project move into the project and then let's go ahead and migrate so we need to be careful here to make sure that we first of all define the database remember we are using the custom router here so database is going to be inventory db and then select the app that should migrate all the app migration files to the database so we now have all of the tables migrated to the database. So let's just refresh the inventory database. We can now see all the tables that are available. So we're now going to move, in this case, we're going to try and move the Django migrations table over to a new schema. 
Now, if you were watching closely, what you would have noticed is that when we created the schema initially, we actually selected the wrong database to actually create the schema for. So if I select the database Postgres, you can see that we created the schema for the Postgres uh, database. So it was, we were in the wrong place in order to actually run that command, it looks like. So let's just make sure that we select inventory this time. We're in the inventory database. Let's go ahead and run a command to create a new schema. Let's go ahead and create our new schema again. So schema. And this time let's call this a Django ad or inventory admin. Okay, so let's give this a go. Inventory admin, let's execute. And let's take a look now. So remember we're on the database, inventory database, and you can now see we have the inventory admin. If I go over to the Postgres database, you can see that isn't available there. So we have now actually created the new schema on our inventory database. So let's now move the Django migration table over to the inventory admin schema. So to do that, we would just need to run the alter, alter table command. We would need to select, in this case, public, because our table is currently on the public schema, and dot, and then the name of the table, migrations, and then we just need to specify the schema to move it to. So set schema, and then we want to move it to inventory underscore admin. So you'll notice as soon as that takes place, the table inventory admin table is removed from the public schema. If we now move into the inventory admin schema, the table is there now for us to administrate. So there we have the basics of creating and managing schemas in a Postgres database. That's pretty much the depth of which we need to understand schemas at this point. And like I keep saying, maybe later on in the course, we'll take a, a deeper look, uh, particularly when we start to think about user management and deploying the database. Um, maybe we can then move into looking at permissions, assigning permissions uh, to different users to allow access to objects in different schemas. Right. If you take a look at the docs in commands, you will find in Postgres, I have updated this now to include a few different commands that we've utilized in this tutorial, should you have forgotten. So they should all be there, select and drop. And I think I've added a few more. If you're utilizing the shell, for example, the commands are going to be slightly different. Hopefully that was a valuable introduction to schemas. Just a quick recap in Postgres SQL, a schema is a logical container that holds database objects like tables, views, functions, indexes, allowing us for better organization and management of these objects within the database. So schemas do provide a way to namespace different features and functionalities, which can simplify database management by compartmentalizing objects, enhancing security, and facilitating the management of database permissions. So in this tutorial, we've learned that the default schema in Postgres is public, but we now have a way of creating our own schemas to organize our database objects more effectively.